And after the event took place, we actually had a former principal software engineer for PlayStation 5 actually explain to us why many of these games were running at 30 frames per second. And it had nothing to do with limitations of the hardware. And let's get real for a second. Playing games at 30 frames per second doesn't feel bad. If the PlayStation 5 could run Horizon Forbidden West at 120 frames per second, I would still want the game running at 30. I would still want the game running at 30. Okay guys, so I really don't think this video needs much introduction. As you heard from the intro, we're dealing with someone very intelligent as you can tell. And honestly, this video is probably going to be very long, so I don't really feel like we need to stretch this out whatsoever. So grab your popcorn, your soda, you know, a snack, whatever you need, because like I said, I have a feeling this is going to be a pretty long video, but let's go ahead and check this shit out. <laughs> Damn, bro, this takes me back to like 2010 with fucking trick shot montages. Like, holy shit, bro. I hit a YY ladder, no scope, fucking 360 headshot for the final kill cam. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! What's happening, guys? Supernova here back with another video. Real quick before we get started, though, just a heads up. I've had more than one person come to me and say that they found themselves unsubscribed from this channel for whatever reason. Yeah, the classic YouTube is unsubscribing people from my channel automatically line. You know, this is a desperate attempt that people use to try and get new subs where, you know, they're hoping you're going to be like, holy shit, is this true? Maybe I'll sub to his channel to see if I get automatically unsubbed after a while. Don't fall for this shit, guys. So if you are someone who has subscribed to this channel in the past, please go and double check to make sure that you're still subscribed. Because like I said, for whatever reason, people are finding that they're being unsubscribed from this channel automatically for who the fuck knows. YouTube is stupid, but anyway. I mean, I agree YouTube is stupid, but 99% of the people posting that shit are just looking for your attention, bro. And congrats, you just gave it to them. Like I said, just a heads up. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because I've seen so many people over the last months and weeks say that... Next generation should be defined by 4K60. Every game should be native 4K, 60 frames per second, that there's no excuse for games not running at 60 frames per second. I mean, there's really not any excuse for games to not be running at 60 FPS in 20 fucking 20 on new hardware that both Microsoft and Sony are saying is comparable to a 2080 Ti. You know, huge fucking X to down on that shit, but there's no excuse for it to not be running at 60. Like, lower the resolution. You're gonna notice a bigger difference in terms of frames per second versus like 1440p versus 4K. If these consoles are even half as powerful as they claim to be, 60 FPS should be the new standard on games for like the next three to four years at minimum and that they are going to be very upset if they are not seeing games running at 60 frames per second that's right dude that little subtle roast there everybody expecting 60 fps next generations just an entitled child we fucking get it bro you really don't think highly of people that disagree with you a trend that we're probably going to notice quite a bit through the rest of this video and I remember there were a few people that were kind of bitching and complaining when the PlayStation 5 event took place and they found out that most of the PlayStation 5 games shown were not running at 60 frames per second but were running at 30 frames per second. And while more than likely most of the people airing their grievances were just Xbox fanboys talking shit, I mean, that is the facts here, okay? Everybody who wanted more for their money, they wanted next-generation games to actually play better on next-generation hardware. They're just a bunch of Xbox fanboys, bro. Let's face it, no true PlayStation fan would ever criticize anything Sony does. I mean, obviously, the people who buy the console are not going to be invested in hoping to get the best product for their money possible because, you know, it's just a bunch of Xbox fanboys, dude, that are just jealous over all those great exclusives. I'm sure many of the people were also PlayStation fans thinking to themselves, the PlayStation 5 is supposed to be extremely powerful 
why can't it play games at 60 frames per second? Because maybe just on the off chance here, you know, I'm just throwing it out here. Maybe I'm onto something here, but it could just be that the PlayStation 5 isn't quite as powerful as Sony's hyping this shit up to be. I mean, after all, they are acting like an SSD is going to cure fucking cancer itself. So, I mean, as always, you should always take what console manufacturers say about the power of their console before launch with a massive grain of salt. But regardless, the PlayStation 5 could run games at 60 FPS if, you know, they actually wanted to prioritize gameplay in a video game, you know, God forbid. I mean, it's not like we play video games to play them. I mean, I just buy them to watch the cutscenes. Who the fuck am I kidding? And after the event took place, we actually had a former principal software engineer for PlayStation 5 actually explain to us why many of these games were running at 30 frames per second. And it had nothing to do with limitations of the hardware. Bull fucking shit. This is such bullshit, dude. Because if this wasn't the case, PC games would be locked at 30 FPS as well. But they're fucking not. I wonder why. Again, just throwing something out here, but maybe it's because PCs don't have the same hardware limitation as consoles do. And more to do with limitations of TVs and developers' decisions based on the HDR capabilities of those TVs. <laughs> You serious? You know, when I read something like this, I think to myself, there's no way anyone could be this stupid to actually believe that shit on face value. That games are not running at 60 FPS because they're worried about 4K TV HDR capabilities. But then I open up YouTube, and I always seem to surprise myself, man, because I'm greeted with a 15 minute long video that we now have the privilege of watching together. I mean, I just really don't think it can get any worse, man. 2020 is 100% the beginning of the end of the human race. Like, Jesus Christ, I think we've already reached our peak because people like this prove that we are literally devolving as a species. I'll read directly from the article what the guy was saying, but just a heads up, it is kind of techie, jarbled nonsense and maybe difficult for you to understand. So I will do my best to explain to you what it is that he's talking about. Well, I agree. It is a bunch of nonsense, but, you know, thank God we have our technical expert here to go through and explain this shit to us, but just keep this in mind, okay? You know, he's claiming to be an expert on technology. This man obviously knows what he's talking about. He's gonna explain this complex concept of HDR to us. Like, thank God he's here to walk us plebs through this very complicated technical shit. So just keep that in the back of your mind as we get a little bit deeper into this video, because it's gonna come right back into play once we get a little further on into this video. Matt Hargett points out in a tweet that the problem is not with the console, but with players' TVs. He writes that a typical cheap 4K TV can only do 4 to 0 HDR at 4K and 60Hz, but can push the HDR to 4 to 2 at 4K and 30Hz. Most game developers would rather have their games look good in 4K than have them run at 60 frames per second. I mean, with that logic, why does every game on PC not have HDR support? But then again, what do I know, man? We're dealing with a technical expert here. I mean, I just call so much bullshit on this. Like, motherfucker, if your TV can't support 4K 60 HDR, then downscale it to 30 FPS or disable HDR. I mean, holy shit, guys. You would think you would need, like, an engineering degree to figure this shit out, but I assure you, I only have a finance degree. Now I'm going to link a video I found of someone explaining what these numbers mean in the description because they're going to do a better job of explaining it than I will, but I'm still going to give you like a basic explanation. These numbers refer to what's called color sampling. There's 444, 422, and 420. 444 captures the most color information about a particular image. 422 captures half the amount of information, and 420 captures even less information. So if you're using a 422, you're going to have a more detailed and colorful picture than if you're running 420. And according to him, many TVs are not able to run 422 at 60 hertz or 60 frames per second. So the developers can either have their games run at 60 frames per second and run 420, which means a less colorful, detailed game, or they can drop it down to 30 frames per second and be able to do 422 and have a much more colorful, detailed picture. 
This is like one of the biggest cop-outs I think I've ever heard for like damage controlling on why games can't run at 60 FPS on the PS5. This is like saying that because some people on PC still play on monitors in 4x3 aspect ratio, that no games that release can release with a 16x9 mode because, you know, that wouldn't be fair to the people who have shitty monitors. Like, what the fuck is this, dude? If someone goes out and buys a shitty 4K TV, that's on fucking them. Why does everyone else have to suffer as a result? Like, this is honestly desperate, bro, and if you actually believe this is the reason then you should probably go seek mental help because you're fucking delusional at this point the devs are opting to have the better looking game rather than the smoother running game if that makes sense yeah because 4k is more marketable to the soccer moms that go out and buy consoles for their nine-year-olds than 60 fps let's face it that's the only reason why and on top of that the playstation 5 is obviously not powerful enough to do 4k 60 so they got to prioritize that marketing he also mentioned the, quote, filmic quality of the games and how developers wanted to maintain that filmic quality. And this is something I try to explain to people all the time, because me personally, there are certain games that I prefer at 30 frames per second and that I believe should be at 30 frames per second. Spoiler alert till a little bit later on in the video, he names a bunch of games like Horizon Zero Dawn that have never actually released in 60 FPS, so he wouldn't know if he actually prefers 30 over 60 FPS on those games because he's never played those games at 60 FPS, but that's beside the point because we're not dealing with someone very intelligent here because I don't think he realizes that you can have the gameplay portions of the game run at 60 FPS so you get the smoother gameplay, and then when you get to dialogue, cutscenes, or whatever, when you want that more filmic quality, you can just lower the frame rate during those portions of the game. Like again, you would think you need like an engineering degree to figure this shit out, but no, this is a desperate attempt for Sony to cover up the fact that their console cannot do 4K 60 like they previously advertised and said, oh well we're choosing to do 30 because most cinematic experience. Bro, you're so full of shit, you're just damage controlling. Poofy flops yo! Poofy flops yo! Now, your fighting games, racing games, and first-person shooters, those should be 60 frames or up because of the types of games that they are. But games that are supposed to be cinematic, your third-person action-adventure games, your The Last of Us, your Uncharted, games like that, where they're supposed to have a very cinematic feel to them, those games, for me, look better at 30 frames per second because they have that quote-unquote filmic quality. Most game developers would rather have their games look good in 4K than have them run at 60 frames per second. Last of Us, your Uncharted, games like that. Once you increase the frames per second up to 60, they then lose that. They look a little weird. Do they run smoother? Absolutely. But they lose that cinematic movie-like feel. Same thing with like God of War, for example. God of War has the two modes you can choose from. You can choose from the graphics mode or the performance mode. The second you put it in performance mode and it kicks the game up to 60 frames per second, it's buttery smooth, but it loses that feel filmic quality. It loses that cinematic feel. This is why I despise PlayStation fanboys in all honesty, because this motherfucker is taking a game like God of War, that the main focus of that entire franchise is the fast-paced combat, and saying that the game plays more smoothly is somehow a negative. And plus, that game did not run at 60 FPS, bro. I played it on the PS4 Pro. First of all, it sounded like my PlayStation was about to commit suicide, but on top of that, I mean, the 45 frames per second made a world of difference and that over resolution mode really didn't even look that different bro like that's what i mean people place way too much importance on resolution because just in case you haven't figured this shit out yet resolution does not equal graphics in order to raise the resolution you have to turn down things like textures details render distance but of course no playstation fanboy will ever mention that shit because you know 4k over everything and if you're so worried about getting that cinematic feel then watch a fucking movie and i'm going to attempt to demonstrate to you exactly what i mean using a clip from the avengers 
I'm not playing this clip for two reasons. One, it has nothing to do with this video, as you'll soon find out. And on top of that, I'm not trying to get a strike from Disney, because I don't really imagine they're too big of fans of my YouTube channel. Okay. Now, I would love to be able to show you that same clip running right now on the screen in 60 frames per second. Just keep in mind that this man included like a one minute long video clip from the Avengers movie, even though the entire point of having that clip in this video was basically completely irrelevant considering he could not include the comparison clip that the whole point of including those clips in the first place was based around. I really need to step up my game, dude. Like this video quality is top tier. But unfortunately, my limited knowledge of how to use Final Cut Pro since I'm self-taught is making it so I can't upload clips in 60 frames per second. Let me get this straight. This dude is using a Mac and cannot figure out Apple's video editing software. I think that tells us all we need to know at this point. Even though I have the clip saved to my computer in 60 frames per second, when I import it into Final Cut Pro, it automatically drops it to 24 frames per second. Then change the project's default frames per second. But yet he's gonna preach to us about how we just have no clue what we're talking about. And it's really because 4K TVs can't handle 4K 60 HDR that the PlayStation 5 isn't running everything at 4K 60. I mean, this is basically like Hippo Zone, bro. You know, we're dealing with a true IT genius here. Right, IPs and shit. You, you hide behind all of that. I'm, uh, I'm pretty much IT genius, but yeah, you hide behind your IT, you hide behind your voice, and YouTube, and oh, I figured it out. So what I will do instead is I will put a link in the description to the clip on YouTube so you can click on it and see for yourself. When you watch it, you'll notice that everything is a little strange, that the animations look weird, that all, everything, it almost looks like it's filmed with an iPhone or a cell phone rather than filmed with a movie camera. The whole cinematic filmic look to the movie is gone when it's at 60 frames per second. This is the same issue that I have playing video games. When I play some of these games at 60 frames per second, they lose that cinematic feel. I really fucking wish I could have demonstrated better. I really wish you didn't make this video, but here we are. Again, why are we comparing a movie to a video game? They're completely different things, but I mean, this dude does play PlayStation exclusive, so I guess there's not really a difference at this point. But fucking Final Cut Pro doesn't want to let me, and I, like I said, I have no, I have no idea how to make the shit work, so I'm doing the fucking best I can, guys. But I mean, you could have Googled it. Did you really do the best you could? I mean, Apple software is designed for, like, grandmothers to use that shit, so... I don't really know what that says about you at this point, that you couldn't figure this out. But let's just keep it rolling at this point, dude. If I called out everything wrong with this video, we'd be here all day. But, like I said, go check it out, and you'll see that it definitely, definitely looks off or strange. And that movie vibe is now gone because it's at 60 frames per second. I also think a lot of gamers are being very unrealistic with their expectations going into the next generation. It seems that gamers on both sides, more so on the Xbox side because it is the more powerful machine, but gamers on both sides expect games next gen to all run at native 4K with real-time ray tracing for shadows and reflections and extremely dense detailed environments and all the bells and whistles and do it all at a minimum of 60 frames per second. I mean, it is kind of on the fault of Sony and Microsoft because they've been hyping up this generation as basically being exactly what you just described. So you kind of can't put the blame completely on them in that situation. But then again, they are taking everything a corporation tells them at face value. So I don't really feel too much pity when they're disappointed. November is going to be an absolute salt mine when they realize the PS5 and Xbox Series X aren't exactly as powerful as they thought you know, they're claiming that the consoles are as powerful as a 2080 Ti, and Sony specifically is acting like their SSD is gonna end world hunger or some shit the way they're talking about it. So I really just can't wait for all these expectations to come crashing down when people are hit with that cold hard reality check that, you know, console manufacturers are once again not exactly being honest when they're trying to sell you a new product. Who would have fucking guessed? And I think that is just unrealistic. No shit. I think they're expecting way too much of these machines. In order to do all of these things, there's going to be sacrifices that have to be made somewhere. And those sacrifices are either going to be made in resolution, frames per second, or the actual details inside the game itself. Something's got to give. 
is kind of like the saying that you can have a car that is fast, cheap, or reliable, but it can't be all three. Because if it's cheap and reliable, it won't be fast. If it's fast and cheap, it won't be reliable. If it's fast and reliable, it ain't gonna be cheap. So first we were comparing video games to movies, and now we're comparing video game consoles to cars. Why can't this video just be fucking over? But before you click off, guys, trust me, the worst part of this entire video is at the very end, and trust me, we're just about to get into this absolute gold mine. And so on and so on. And I think that's the same type of mentality that these gamers realistically need to use when looking at gaming in the next generation. We can have graphically intensive games that push the GPUs and use real-time ray tracing and all the bells and whistles and crazy new tech of the next generation. We can have games with high frame rates. We can have games with high resolutions, but we can't have all three at the same time. Somewhere, sacrifices are going to be made. Sometimes sacrifices are going to be resolution. Sometimes the sacrifices are going to be frame rate. And sometimes the sacrifices are going to be the things that we see on screen. And it would appear that most developers, when deciding where they're going to make sacrifices, are choosing to do it in the frames per second department because they rather keep all of the detailed environments and the ray tracing and all the other great shit in the game. And they would also like to keep the higher resolution so they have that much more detailed, crisper looking image. The developer's main goal is to make the best looking game possible, not the smoothest running game possible if that makes sense. So because one person who worked at Sony says that every single developer on planet Earth would rather have their game look better than play better, we're just supposed to believe that's the reason games aren't gonna be 4K60 on the PlayStation 5? Like, forgive me for not believing this and basically realizing this is one big damage control attempt by Sony to cover up the fact that in 2020, their next generation consoles still cannot run games at 60 frames per second by default. But you know, obviously, I'm not the expert here. This dude knows way more than I could ever hope to. Now, I'm sure there are devs who are going to prioritize smoothness over anything else, and they're going to target that 60 frames per second, and that's going to be mandatory for the game they are trying to make. And those are primarily going to be your first-person shooters, racing games, and fighting games. But I think the, all the other games, the third-person action adventure games, your Uncharted's, your Spider-Man's, your Horizon Zero Dawn's, your Fable, if they actually finally unveil Fable, games like that, I think that developers are going to target making the game look as good as possible, not necessarily run as smooth as possible. Yeah, because who wants to play a video game when you could just watch the cutscenes, am I right? Like, that's the whole reason everybody buys a video game. Like I said earlier, I would be lying if I said I did anything different. I mean, it's 2020 after all. Who even buys video games to play them anymore? Maybe a bunch of boomers, but that's about it. So obviously, games should be more filmic, bro, at 30 FPS, instead of actually play better, because like I said, who even plays them at this point? And let's get real for a second. Oh shit guys, here it comes. Prepare for your brain cells to commit suicide one by one. Playing games at 30 frames per second doesn't feel bad. Playing games at 30 frames per second doesn't feel bad. Yo, is this person fucking retarded? Yes. Playing games at 30 frames per second doesn't feel bad. I've never once played a game running at 30 frames per second and thought to myself, fuck man, this game is clunky and slow as shit because it's 30 frames per second. Nah, the game felt fine. Do they feel smoother at 60 frames per second? Of course, but is it a huge, massive deal? Fuck no. I love how he's saying that about games that he's only ever played in 30 FPS and has never actually experienced in 60. But of course, he's probably going to try to come at me with a, oh, well, I actually have a very powerful gaming PC, so I have played these games at 60. Bro, you just admitted that you have a Mac. You can miss me with that shit. Now, I know those of you who play a lot of online multiplayer first-person shooters are screaming at me in the comments. And listen, I get it. I understand. When it comes to playing first-person shooters online competitively, 60 frames per second should be the minimum because of how much better it is and how much better your reaction times can be and how much smoother everything runs. I totally get it. I mean, you say that you get it, bro, that 60 FPS is objectively better when it comes to the gameplay experience. And in case you forgot, you're buying a video game for the game play. Like, it's not some long-lost secret we're talking about here. Everybody knows this shit. You buy a video game to play it. So why would you not want every single game out there to play better at 60 frames per second? I mean, I just genuinely start to wonder what's going through this dude's head. Like, I know I always say that console fanboys are not the most intelligent people out there, but I think this really does prove it. I understand. So for first-person shooters, like I said, and fighting games and racing games, I think it should be 60 frames per second. But for everything else... I have zero issue with them running at 30 frames per second. And that, like I said, to me personally, in most cases, I would prefer it. If the PlayStation 5 
could run Horizon Forbidden West at 120 frames per second, I would still want the game running at 30. I would still want the game running at 30. Look, here's the thing. Fine. Listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I'm kind of retarded. <laughs> In case you're wondering why aliens haven't come to enslave humanity yet, this is fucking why. Because anything higher than 30 takes away that cinematic feel from the game. And I personally enjoy that cinematic feel. And that seems to be something that a lot of these developers are aiming for, is to have that, again, a quote-unquote filmic feel to the games, that cinematic property. So, long story short... The PlayStation 5 is too weak to run games of 4K 60. I don't think the 60 frames per second is the end-all, be-all when it comes to video games next generation. I don't think that 60 frames per second should define whether or not a game is a next generation game. I mean, I kind of agree. Like, it shouldn't be the defining factor for a next generation game because games should have already been default 60 FPS years ago at this point. But, you know, here we are once again in 2020 at the start of a new console generation, once again wondering if games will ever reach that 60 FPS mark. Because once again, it looks like we're going to be in another generation filled with a bunch of 30 FPS titles that prioritize a resolution over everything else. And I also think a lot of people thinking games next gen are going to have everything turned up to the max and be native 4K while running at 60 frames per second are just being unrealistic and setting themselves up for disappointment. Hate to break it to you guys. And that's the video, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you agree with what I'm saying? Just in case you guys were a little bit confused, my answer to that is absolutely fucking not. But with that said, guys, that is going to do it for this video today. If you did enjoy it, make sure to drop a like on it. I would greatly appreciate it. And with that said, I want to thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day to check out this video and for all the recent support as well. And I will catch you guys next time. I can't